Hey everybody, and welcome back to the vlog. Hey guys, today we're shooting video from beautiful wine country in Temecula, California. And what better way to get here than in my classic Mercedes convertible. Okay, so today we're gonna do another Roy story. And I'm gonna keep it in the theme and the time where all this happened. And so for all of you that have not watched my la my most recent Roy videos, you're gonna have to go back there because I wanna make this like a fast one. So, okay, um, I'm starting, no, I, I have outshined Roy DeMeo in the eyes of Joey Bricchini concerning tag jobs and all the crooked shit that goes along with the automotive industry. So already by this point in time, it's clear that I know more about tagging cars and doing all kinds, and then this Alabama thing, I just completely outshined Roy DeMeo to the point where Joey doesn't need him no more as far as the car stuff. But I believe there were other things that Roy DeMeo was doing for Joey that was on a, had nothing to do with cars and was on another level and that probably had to do what Roy would turn into in the next 10 years. So this is 1973, 1974. Roy was a serial killer for those 10 years until he met his fate in the trunk of his Cadillac with bullets in his face. How did that work out for you, Roy? Okay, so um, this is where me and Roy came to blows, just about Punches were thrown, I didn't hit him, he didn't hit me, and Joey was the referee. Let's talk about what happened. So I bet, so I told Joey Bricchini in front of Roy DeMeo that I had a hook where I could register any car. Hell, I could even make up a car, make up a VIN number, and get that car registered, insure, insure this fantasy ghost car, ghost car, let's call it that, and get paid by the insurance company and all this other bullshit about stealing cars, tagging them, changing, taking fenders off, all of that went out the window. If what I claimed I could do was true. Roy being the expert in front of Joey Bricchini, and now forget, Joey Bricchini didn't know jack shit about the car business. He didn't know anything about the car business. So, I, said, I can register that piece of junk in the back, have it in my name in a week, and I did. I'm not gonna get into how I did it here, but you have to look at the other videos. And Roy said, impossible. So I said, okay, put your money where your mouth is. I'll bet you $100. $100 that next week, I'm gonna have that car in my name. Impossible, he said. And Joey just sat back don't thinking, I was an idiot that you can't, do this, but I did, and it was because of a probate judge in Andy Lucia, Alabama. You gotta watch the other thing. So anyway, I did it. I showed up with the registration in New York plates. I said, here, okay, now I proved it to Joey. It was just a test. It was a junk car that they had in the back. It was just a test, but I got the car in my name with no paperwork from Joey. Roy said, bullshit, that's phony, it's not real. And I threw the plates at him with the registration. He called his girls at DMV or a cop or whoever he called. Hour later, they, they ran the car, ran the plate, and it came back to me. And I said, okay, where's my hundred dollars? Where's my, that's bullshit, I'm not paying you. I don't believe, I don't know what you did. I don't know what you, but that's bullshit. So he didn't pay me. And this is going down in front of Joey Bikini. Now, Joey Bricchini was a no bullshit guy. He had ethics, he had morals. He, 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 I kept saying to myself, what the hell are you doing, Joey, doing with this guy? What are you doing with this guy? So anyway, now I start registering ghost cars. Cars that don't exist, but there's a B here. Let's fight B. Anyway, I start registering ghost cars. 
Me and Joey are, are, regist- are insuring them, putting them in people's names that he knows, and we're getting checks. The checks are coming in. This is a, maybe a month, two months later, we're getting the checks in. Roy don't like it one bit, but now he knows I'm for real. So one day he comes in with his dirty smirk. I'm sitting on the couch and he oh, comes flying in like he owns the fucking place. You don't own shit. And don't forget, everyone, that may not believe this story. Don't forget, this is 1974 and Roy ain't shit. Roy ain't shit. He thinks who he is, but he's nothing. Joey Bracchini is a made man in the Lucchese crime family. And I was his kid. He couldn't put a hand on me. So he comes in. Joey at this point point in time is trying to keep the peace between Roy DeMeo and Kevin Moore. He's trying to separate us. I got orders. When he comes in the office, I'm, I'm to go into the shop, sweep the floor, clean the toilet, do whatever the fuck. Get away from him. Get away. So Roy's like, so Joey's like the referee. So this time he came in, he gave me that look. He gave me that you piece of shit look is what he gave me. And I got up. Now, I can tell you a little bit about me. I used to box. Uh, I never backed down from a fight. And I am 100% Irish. I don't back down. I'm an ex-Marine. I'm not backing down. I'm 100 and maybe 60 pounds. I, I'm in cut shape. He's 35 years old with a pot belly. So he comes in, gives me the look. I said, hey, Roy, you got my money? You got my $100? He goes, I ain't paying you shit. I go, I, so now I go off. I jump up. I go, fuck me, I'll beat you around. And we start going at it. We start tussling. Joey comes in. He breaks it up. He throws Roy out. Tells me to sit on the couch. He goes outside with Roy. Roy leaves. Joey comes back in. He goes, I understand. I don't want you talking to him no more. Unless it has to do with business. Okay? I told him the same thing. I just sent him home. And, and so... You know, I don't even think this is a newsworthy story, to be perfectly honest with everyone. I went for the last 50 years with all of these stories that meant nothing to me because I didn't know who Roy turned out to be until just last year when I started seeing videos about him on NYC Crime Spot with Brett's channel. I didn't know he killed uh, uh, Joey. I, I didn't know any of this stuff until recently. So... All of these stories, I mean, I, I can think of maybe a hundred stories I have with him. And I think that there are some viewers out there that I could tell, okay, Roy came into the shop, went, took a crap, got back in his car and drove off, and you guys would want to hear it. I, I just don't get it. But you know what? I'm a businessman. This is my channel. And all you viewers are my customers. In fact, even... Let me go even further. Are like family to me. Some of the comments and that you guys have have wrote in the comment section, actually, some of them actually brought me to tears. That you enjoy the the content so much. Um, so I want everyone to know that I hate doing these stories. I hate, but I must do them. So. I'm going to give a little announcement about what's coming up. I already did a video on it, but in case you guys didn't see that video, next month, my crew and I booked a flight to Queens, to New York City, and we have a dive team complete with every piece of equipment, scuba divers. We're having everybody be there next month. So, and can you guys imagine? And they have, and the dive team has insured me that if there's a car in that water, they're going to be able to detect, de- to detect it, and they have the technology and the equipment to pull it out of the water. So, can you guys imagine that? The 71 Lincoln that I put in there that I smelt the dead body in. Can you imagine the Black Ford uh, LTD? being raced. I mean, I don't know what kind of condition they're going to be in after 50 years, but we're going to find out. Also, a little side note, that this dive team investigated this thoroughly, and they were unable to find any newspaper clippings about, or any police reports about cars being taken out of that part of the East River. So, um, I, I, I think it would just be mind-blowing 
to see the cause and maybe even the remains of um, some of Roy's first victims. Remember, this is 1974. So I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. Uh, and um, we're going to bring you more Roy stuff. I still got about another six months of torture to bring up these stories. But we're working on the next one.